Hey guys, it's James from Winter Insight here, and I'm here with Jason Summerfield, uh, who is going to talk me through the Black Crows uh, brand and the skis in their collection. This is the range for next winter, which includes some styles that carry over from this winter, and a couple of unmasked styles we'll talk on. So I'm going to hand over to Jason, who's going to talk us through the Black Crows range and a little bit about the brand. So tell us, Jason. Thanks, James. Um, so this is the new Black Crows range for next year, but uh, a lot of people will go, well, Actually, it looks a lot like the year before. Okay. Um, and that's because it is. There's only a few new skis in the range, and there's a good reason for that. Yeah. A lot of ski shops haven't been open, or yeah. most, or all, let's say, because of uh, the situations we're all facing. And it made sense to Black Crows to not change everything. Okay. So, but you'll always need, you need a bit of newness in there. So, let me show you where the newness is. So, with Black Crows, we we segmentate the range into four different categories. Okay. In fact, five if we include touring. So we've got resort, which is obviously your more piste orientated ski. Yep. All terrain, big mountain, and birdie. Okay. Um, and then we have touring on the side. With the birdie range, there's skis in the birdie range that represent all of these different categories. Okay, and okay. birdie being more female specific, I'll assume. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so yeah, we talked through the range. So we got a new ski here in the resort range and we got a new ski here in the all-terrain range. Okay. So the range lines up as it did before, Orb, carry over from last year, Virtus and Divas. Okay. But the new ski in the range looks radically different. And, and if you just have a look at the shape of that ski, it's tip profile, and its tail profile, you'll see it's a very different looking product. Very cool, pull it out for us, let's have a look. Okay, so the idea of this ski is about having fun on the piste, and there's a new word that Black Crows are using from this point on, and it's core. Okay. Um, core doesn't mean like a lab or anything else, or pro, it means exploring new areas. Okay. Coming out with something different. And so this ski, as I say, is about having fun on the piece. We've got a really, really wide shovel. And we have, let's see if we can get that into the camera. We have a swallowtail yeah. on the end. Nice. And what you'll see actually, if I lower the ski and turn it round, is quite a dramatic side cut. That side cut's a 13 meter turn radius. Okay, wow. So real good, fun, turning ski. The ski isn't overly soft, so it still has quite a high level of performance. It has a classic camber. Yeah. It's poplar and fiberglass inside, keeping the ski quite nice and uh, lightweight. Yeah. And it's a semi cap sidewall. Okay. So you put all of these things together, a really nice ski to turn on piece. It's going to make you smile at the end of every turn. You can play around, you can go switch, play on the slope side. Um, it's just a great all round fun ski, and um, I think it's going to do really well. And it's not just a normal piece ski. Yeah. And Black Crows would never give anyone just a normal piece. Yeah, I mean, I like the category of resort because for me, if you go to a resort, you need a ski that you can do everything in that resort with. And that doesn't necessarily mean just the piece. It could be bumpy bits, the powder if you get the nice snow days, etc. So I like the concept of resort. I'm a big old mountain ski type fan for going everywhere. And I mean, Alex, like I'd have a lot of fun with it on piece, very turny, um, but still wide enough at the tip and tail that if I got a snow day, I wouldn't be disappointed either. So a Absolutely. And, and, and just going back on what you said, really, really important, the word resort over piste. Um, when we go into a resort and we ski with our families and things like that, you don't want to be on the widest thing. You don't want to be on a rocket ship. You just want to be on a fun tool that you can charge if you want to. You can slow down if you want to. And having fun at a certain pace is what this ski is all about. Yeah, so you can skid a few, you can also bank them a few GS turns in there as well. So. Absolutely, yeah. I'll definitely put a smile on people's faces. Brilliant. So that's the new one. What's that called? Again, the new one? That's called the you... Myrus Core. Myrus Core. Okay, great. So as part of the resort range, that's the newest one. You've got three in there that could carry on. So it's the Orlo, Virtus and Divas. So that's cool. And then the all-terrain, you've got Justice, uh, Kamex and Captis, which I've skied two of those. And good skis. Um, tell us about the, the new one. 
So once again, a blank top sheet here, and uh, these do have graphics on them. Okay. I just haven't received the ones with graphics on them. So yet. The, the graphics are secret, and in the uh, post for this video, what I would do is I'll put the pictures of the new graphics as well, and then maybe people can vote on uh, whether they like them or not. But Absolutely. I'm sure they'll be good. Can you get it in white though, if you really want? Uh, no, not really. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that answers that question. If anyone wanted to know. So. so. Um, so yeah, in this range, we have the Justice, the Kamux, and the Cactus. Okay. Um, and the new ski in this range is this ski here called the Serpo. Okay. And where the Serpo falls is it's, what we try to do is balance the flex of the ski out. So this ski isn't as stiff as the Justice was before. Okay. So, um, but that doesn't affect the performance at all. Um, it just makes it a, a hell of a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, so we have a 20 meter turn radius on this ski. And once again, we're using Poplar inside and it's a fiberglass ski as well, okay. fiberglass core. We're using our H-frame and this is all about performance. So you'll see, I don't know if you can pick it up on the camera, but might be able to zoom in we can there. probably zoom in there a little bit yeah, and you might just, just see that. some of this texture here. So that adds a little bit more stiffness in the area that you want it and it also allows you to drive the ski from the binding yeah it's like a giant h on the ski that gives it that frame and plate underfoot yeah yeah and so this now fits nicely into the all mountain category the retail price here and i should say also on the myra's core was 62995 okay so um so that really now just heads off our all mountain category Brilliant. And then maybe a smaller category in the whole UK market sense because we don't have mountains, so second pair of ski ownership is a little bit lower in this country. But more and more people are looking for their, their own fat skis to take away or something that they, is a bit fatter for the powder days they love, but they'll just put up with it on the harder piece days. So tell us a little bit about the big mountain and, and also maybe how they perform on hard piece days as well. Because some people, I believe, don't think they can possibly ski on that condition, but we've skied those sorts of skis in, not just from Black Rose, from other skis over the years in those conditions. So tell us a little bit about the, the big mountain skis. So this is the area of the brand really that Black Crows started at. Yeah. Um, so it was all about creating a be beautiful looking product, but making it perform really well. Yeah. Um, there's no bigger statement than that, than the Free Ride World Tour. Um, which I have to say we won today, okay. which is fantastic. That's what I was doing this morning, James, watching yeah. that. Um, so these skis, you can ski them all over the hill. Obviously, they're great in the soft stuff. Um, they're not noodles. They're not super soft skis. So you can charge hard in the powder. But when you talk about skiing them on piste, you can ski any piece with a side cut on piste. It's the same. Yeah. It's just the only difference is getting it over. So if it's narrow or underfoot, it's easier to get onto its side. If it's slightly wider, it's slightly harder to get onto its side. But it can be done. Yeah. So the only way you'll feel it is in the transition of the turn. And that's where you need a certain amount of fitness and ability just to get the ski rolling over onto its side. Um, and I say that when you start looking at a ski that's 120 plus underfoot, yeah, that gets a bit more challenging. But personally, anything up to 105, 110 underfoot, that's manageable on piste. Uh, you're not gonna, it's not gonna perform the same as these, of course. Yeah, yeah. But when it's on its side, you're still gonna get the same turn experience. Yeah. As long as you've got a sharp edge and a nice edge angle, the ski should turn, right? Absolutely. The uh, it's just rolling it onto its edge, which. Yeah. Uh, you know, that finds, that's the testing part for the yeah. skin. And I know from these, you're not going to get little short slalomy turns in, but you want to do big GS turns on piece. There's so much fun and chargy. So, and then you can pop off rollers and all sorts, and you've got a real nice big landing base as well. So yeah, for someone who maybe wants a big mountain ski, but knows that they're not always going to get big mountain, they still give a lot across the, the whole mountain as well. And a lot of fun. Um, yeah, that's a great range. And so, um, We've got those four there in the big mountain. Which one of them, out of curiosity, because that's where the brand started, which one of them is now, the, the, would you say, the best seller for the brand that pinnacalizes kind of where most people are going with Black Crows? Well, uh, the Anima won the Free to Ride World Tour today. So, okay. Um, but it really, uh, certainly in the UK, it comes down to waist width and where people feel more comfortable. Yeah. Um, and I think a lot of people feel more comfortable if you're 110 or under, yeah. because there's more versatility. Okay. There. So um, the Corvus is actually a really big seller in the UK. 
Um, it's 107 underfoot. It's got 21 meter turn radius, and that ski there, you'll ski the same as that on piece as you would off piece. You just charge. Yeah. And you'll notice as well if you look at the tail profile of the ski as well. It's a flat back. That one. It's yeah. a flat back, and that means you can absolutely charge this all over the mountain. Yeah, it looks great too. It's an awesome piece of kit, that one. Perfect. And so, lastly, but certainly not least is the the ladies uh, collection here now tell me first of all mr ski expert over the years what is the difference between men's and lady skis and why if i'm a lady can't i buy this or can i or why should i consider this instead maybe what's the big thing about ladies specific skis uh you know what there's not a great deal of difference okay um so you know a lot of people would say it's about where you mount on the ski because this Central gravity is slightly different to a, from a man's or a woman. Yeah, and some P skis would say mounted forward because a lady's hip. Absolutely yeah. right. Okay. Um, but when it comes to a flat deck ski like this, it you know it doesn't it doesn't matter as much. Okay. Um, also, a lot of brands out there will use slightly different materials, slightly lighter versions of cores. But in this range here, the wood, the main wood. Yeah. Um, we're using um, is poplar, and we slight we change the wood construction slightly in the big mountain skis, but uh, everything else is a poplar core. So really, not a great deal of difference. I mean, if you like the look, if you like the colour, if it matches the outfit, that's great. I mean, that's half of it anyway. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and the lengths as well. Yeah. Okay. Great. And that makes a lot of sense. I mean, um, you know, some people get a bit hung up with those gender specific skis as well. But ultimately, if you like the graphic, the skis are similar. And certainly, like you say, on flat deck skis where you can mount the binding wherever you like, it makes not a lot of difference. And certainly it depends on your, I should say, it, it's your ski ability as well. Yeah. Um, so if you're a good intermediate advanced level skier, or certainly a lot of industry skiers that I know, um, you know, when we're out on a ski test, People will test all of these skis, whether you're a man or you're woman, uh, yeah. a woman. So it doesn't really matter as much. Yeah, I had the lovely job of testing uh, women's skis uh, for the, on the telegraph test, and uh, there isn't, you know, I think skis they were great. <laughs> no exactly, <laughs> they were just shorter. Yeah. That was it. So, okay, brilliant. So, not just skis. We should touch on the fact that there are other products uh, within the Black Rose uh, stable. So, uh, I love these poles. Uh, I have a pair of these poles. And, you know, some touring poles is. So anything else they do outside of the skis other than just poles and uh, skins? Sure, I mean, Torin's are probably one of the biggest areas for Black, Black Crows, and it's where the brand is known yeah. as well. And so what we do have, and actually they're tucked away over here for now because uh, we haven't got a great deal of space in here, but um, full Torin Ranger skis, um, they're the same as they were last year, and Touring poles. Okay. Um, so we have poles like the Duos there, uh, which is a two-part pole. And we also have a three-part pole as well, and ski skins on the end. Okay. Um, if you're, if you'd like to be entertained in one of these categories here, we have the right pole for the right terrain and the right ski. So if it's big mountain, we have a wider, stiffer, longer grip pole. Yeah. Which a lot of people prefer. Um, if you're just doing that small transition um, from the top of the lift to the the powder run that you're going to put down then you would probably take a pole like here, you can yeah. grip it lower um, and you can push just the way you want to. But also on the on the all mountain and the resort range as well, we have a selection of poles um, that, that suits. Um, this pole's been around for a few years now, but this is one of our new poles. So it's a fully carbon pole, 13 mil shaft. Um, it's called the Stans. And when I say fully carbon, there's a lot of poles out there that claim the carbon, and you can get certain amounts of carbon in a pole. Composite poles. Let's call them, yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, but this is a full carbon pole. Um, it's going to retail at 59.95, so it's great value. It's a good price for a carbon for, pole. Yeah. For a carbon pole. Great. Well, Thank you, Jason. That was great. I mean, uh, I like the look of the brand. I've skied the brand. I like the skis. And uh, yeah, I think it's great that you've, uh, someone's doing it in the UK like you are and with your experience as well. So I wish you the best of luck with it. Thanks, James. Thanks. Cool. Right. That's it.